Brotherhood by Kunt Kindred. Theodos Anarioi Chaman Karak Lai Domino Artemis. Chapter 1F by Theodos. Describing how a drop pod operates is a lot like describing a fantastical attempt at self-destruction. You are given the final trappings of war, be it spare bolt gun magazines, a frag grenade belt, or a final purity seal pinned on the shoulder or breast. Then, you gather your armaments, and strap yourself into the pod. All the while alarm bells signifying that the docking bay would soon be deprived of oxygen would be blaring around you. There is a numbing wrench in your ears and mind as the docking chamber is purged of life-giving air. And then you fall. You fall for miles, minutes, or, for one unfortunate past mission of mine, hours. I knew no fear as I fell, however, for I am an ultramarine, or... At least I was. I was a captain in the first company for my chapter of Space Marines, the greatest warriors of humanity. I lead soldiers in a battle against numerous foes and was well decorated within my ranks. I had stood past centuries of bloodshed and war, all the while my mind being held a fortress of stoic bravery, and then my station was ripped from me. Men in black power armor appeared on my ship bearing inquisitorial rosettes and offered me what they referred to as an honor. They gave me the chance to serve a secretive organization known as the Death Watch, a coalition of veteran space marines who had proven themselves on the field of battle. Men who stood against the tide of Xenos, the alien. I accepted, unknowing of the position's consequences. Once I joined the Death Watch, my death was staged on my ship. A corpse was drawn, from whom I do not know wish to know and I attended my own funeral. My men believe their captain had died not while leaving them on the field of battle, but taken by disease. I was not celebrated with valor or praise, just sent me into the void undecorated and unremembered. I had died, and in so doing I learned why my new colleagues had no of themselves death watch. I was quietly whisked away from my ship, and onto a new one wherein I was demoted to serving under a new captain named Decius. As I fell in the drop pod with Decius, I pondered why I had ever joined this shadow organization in the first place. While I do not regret the honor of serving the Emperor with his most chief veteran fighters, I do still hold an affection with those I had called friend and brother. I wondered what they were doing now, and how many had died since I had left them. I wondered if any of them still thought of me or if any of them even cared to carry on my legacy. I quickly dashed away these thoughts, for they were selfish and cruel. My legacy is a legacy of mankind, and it is not my place as a space marine to question that. Brother Theodos, the man beside spoke, his voice grabbled by the Vox receiver of my power armor. I sense a turmoil on your mind. Hold fast, and banish such thoughts. We go to war. The man speaking to me was our heel. Another member of the Death Watch and former member of the Ultramarines, though I had never met him in my life before personally. He was a librarian, a seeker, capable of feats those living on primal worlds would akin to magic or sorcery. I had shared much of my time with him since coming to the Death Watch due to our similar past, and I have grown a fondness and understanding with the man. Fighting beside a fellow member of my previous chapter was a boost to my morale which was probably why we were selected to accompany each other in our kill team. Aside from myself, my brother Alahiel, and my captain Decius, there was a final, silent man in the drop pod. Unlike myself and Alahiel, he was a former member of the Salamander chapter of Space Marines, little more than a far cult in my opinion. While he was base and held little with the common teachings of tactic and strategem, H.M.A.N. was an expert in heavy weapons and demolitions. Skilled enough to join the Death Watch, at any rate, his head was bowed in prayer, and he cradled his gun to his chest. As we continued to descend, I too bowed my head in prayer. My thoughts turned to the Emperor on Holy Terror, and how we were doing his work by coming here and meeting out his divine will. As my eyes closed, Captain Decius spoke, Fear not the alien, for humanity's destiny is higher than any other form of life. We do not go to war, which, we go to purge, as if his words were a divine sending. The drop pod crashed into the ground with a whirring slam. Our harnesses released after the initial impact, and the walls of the pod lowered to reveal a smoking battlefield. Three figures, squat and hiding behind cover, 
turned towards us with shock and anger in their expressions. Their faces were green and ugly, like the more of an inbred canning. Dagger teeth jutted from their snarling mouths, and all three took on the cry of, Warrig as they saw us. I grasped my shield in my hand, crackling energy humming from it. I knelt underneath its protective surface as the orcs rose their crude weapons to fire at me. The energy of the shield lashed out at each of their bullets, destroying them before they could impact. While they fired upon me, a chairman rose his fiery weapon, thrumming red with heat and death before discharging into our offenders. The screams of the orcs as they burst in light brought a wicked smile to my face as I rose from my hiding position to see their scorched carcasses. We four angels of death stepped from the pod, gazing out at the field of destruction around us. Smaller creatures fled from our presence as they saw their masters burn, and we returned their cowardice with straight boulder fire killing them instantly. We walked forth, calm in demeanor and cold in exterior. Men and women dressed in combat armor stood at attention as we stepped past them. Some of them bowed their heads, swearing loyalty to the Emperor or bravery in battle. Captain Decius was furious at all of them. Guardsmen he began. Do not stand here idle in the face of the enemy. The Emperor's women and men have little time to bow during war. Take up your weapons. Regroup where the fighting is thickest. We shall handle ourselves the majority of the Imperial Guardsmen nodded, taking up their weapons and wounded like Captain Decius commanded. I looked after them, and asked, and where shall we go? Captain Decius looked to Anahiel, who was firmly grasping a long metal staff in his armored hands. It held hair of these of winged beasts and eyes that glowed with a faint blue hue as it swayed in the wind. Anahiel himself was gazing into the cloud-marred sky, frowning as he spoke. I sense the green skins commune and the war. It dances across the sky like, like a naked drunkard. Can you follow it? Which Captain Decius asked. Taking up his gun as he surveyed the ground. I believe I can. Its source is not doing anything to mask its presence. Anamiel assented, casting his gaze back down again. His red eyes shone through the shadows of his embroidered, white hood with a fiery concentration. He had caught the figurative scent of the orc warbus and he was ready to begin the chase. Decius shouted and coded orders to the other captains landing on the battlefield in other drop pods to maintain their position and draw fire away from us. I took in the scene as he did so, one that matched the battle charts I had glanced upon precisely before we landed ourselves. It was just inside a metropolitan area covered all around by mountainous terrain. The crags would extend four hundreds of miles all around the mining town giving it a wide advantage to most forms of assault. The station in which we were fighting was a refinery, and forged armor and weapons for the guardsmen we had just relieved. It was a point of heavy strategic worth, and it was overrun by the orc hordes, green-skinned aliens who subsisted on warfare of all kinds. We would not let them take this station, even if it cost us our lives. After Decius finished telecommuting orders to the rest of the men, he turned back to us and plainly spoke, We will follow the witch's lead. Shield, stand and guard the witch. Burns, stand at the rear guard and cover for us. We move. For the emperor at the emperor's cry, we took position. A chaman standing in the back while I protected Anamiel and Captain Decius in the front with my storm shield. We moved quickly through the battle, staying low and behind cover marine and guardsmen fought the green tide of death. Anamiel directed me with verbal or physical indications of where to go. We ran for perhaps 15 minutes through the city, behind alleyways and thoroughfares, streets and buildings. Blood and decay. As we ventured deeper and deeper into the complex, corpses and enemies became more abundant. In our tightly knit band, we dispatched what minor threat came into view, but due to our numbers and discreetly chosen passageways we managed to avoid the bulk of the horde. When we came to the downtown area, Anariel held up a hand. He returned his gaze skyward, and nodded. Here, it is right here. I can sense the alien's presence inside this building. He is leading from Incy before Anahiel could finish. Bullet fire rang from the windows. It clashed against Anahiel's shoulder pads and a wrenching clang of steel against steel. I brought my shield to hide Anahiel from the rest of the barrage as a chairman and Captain Decius returned cover fire against our attackers. Decius directed us to back into the alley where we came from, and we quickly obliged. A chairman was the last to take cover. 
leaving a final bow to flame to the orc's turrets as we gathered ourselves. I marked three guns, Captain, all on the second floor. We need to get inside before they fortify the first. I listed, taking a knee as I inspected my shield. We need a distraction larger than burnt as fire it seems. Captain Decius murmured, snarling, down them. We should have come sooner, making comments on the past does not help our present. I retorted, resulting in the captain giving me an acid stare from under his helmet. Captain, Anneliel began, I may have a way to remove the turrets as a problem. I just need to see them. You have a spell for this, which Captain Decius inquisited, turning his wrathful gaze from me to the stony expression of Anneliel. I do. But we do not have time for your phobias to impact your tactical judgment. We can either charge mindlessly into the building while bullets rain down upon us, or I can remove the threat to our lives. The choice is yours, insubordinate captain. Anamiel. Enough I broke. Standing between the two, a chairman was as silent as ever. All was silent save for the orc's bullets for a long moment. Captain Decius finally relented, ordering, shield. Guard the witch while it casts its spell. Burns and I shall provide cover and fire. I took up my shield as I stood in front of Anamiel, and charged into the bullets, providing the needed distraction. While the turrets trained on me, a chairman and the captain fired their weapons into them while Anamiel walked in between them. He raised his staff, and shouted a primal roar at the orcs, one which I would swear to the grave they returned. The air around him shimmered with a blue light, almost as if he had pulled the sky itself down around him. Bolts of the same pigment leapt from his open palm, striking out against the turrets one by one, each becoming silent as the battlefield settled. Anamiel breathed heavily while his nimbus of energy subsided. Captain Decius drew ahead of us, and scoffed, abhor the witch. Know that our enemy lies ahead. Do not be idle. We followed our captain inside. The door was barred closed, but the meager defenses did not stop our power armor enhanced strength. The inside of the building was dark, but our helmet's vision was not impeded. Our armaments were serving us well as we advanced inside the building as softly as our heavy metal feet would allow. I took the lead as we advanced down hallways, my gaze swooping about to ensure we would not be surprised. The loudspeakers of the complex rang with a whine that indicated an improper use of the Vox caster, causing each of us to wince as we halted out advance. A gravelly voice sounded all around us from the speakers. Space Marines I didn't know a fellow like me warranted such a honor do not waste my time with words. Xenos. My ears require your screams instead, Captain Decius responded, signaling us to keep advancing through the hallways. Don't be such a jit, Kumi. It's five floors to me, and I'm getting bored. Witness the stupidity of the Xenos as it reveals its own position to us. Brothers, Captain Decius dryly replied. Oh, are you weren't supposed to do that? The burly voice indignantly shouted back. Captain Decius decided to stop bantering with the enemy for as he fell silent. The voice continued, Ya humies never want to have fun while ya fight. If ya took this a lot less serious like, I bet you'd lose more. I'd like it if ya lost more. We would never stoop to your level, alien. Make peace with your false gods if you hold any. For today you die in the name of the Emperor. Captain Decius declared as we reached the stairs. Na na na. Ya ver got that mixed up wrong today. Ya lot's gonna die in the name of your Emperor. I ma live in filth, squalor, and the blood of your space marine brethren as we reach the top of the stairs. The door to the second floor burst open. A corpse of a member of the Death Watch flew past, and hit my shield with tremendous force, causing me to trip and fall onto an oil. A large orc easily the size of three men bashed through the door and filled the room with flame from a weapon mounted into his left hand. All the while shouting the orcs were clear while Galahiel and I were free from the danger of the flames as we had toppled onto the ground. But HMN was caught just inside the blast. A primal roar surged from his vox, the first sound I had ever heard him make. To anyone who didn't know the man, it might have sounded like a scream of terror. It was not terror that had overcome him, however but orgasmic fury. A chairman released flame from his own weapon back onto the orc warbus whilst still aflame. The orc howled in pain, and covered his face with his armored right side, 
which was replaced with a tangled mess of wires all connected to a massive gouging claw. Captain Decius leapt through a Chanan's fire, and plunged his sword into the orc's arm, forcing him back into the room. It seemed the warbus had deceived us about its location, for the pain screams of the orc before us matched the annoying drivel that once poured from the loudspeakers. As Anahil and I recovered, standing back up again, a Chanan's arm I had begun self-cooling. Steam drifted off a Chanan's frame as he knelt on the ground, his arm over his side. He was in great pain, but he would survive. Behind him, however, came lights and shouts of wag from below. The orcs had tried to flank us, and soon they would overcome a Chanan. I shouted, and ran down past Adriel to support my fallen comrade. The green skins coming into view as I did, I began to swing my power mace against them. Anuriel's blue bolts of psychic fire clashing from behind me as I did so. We held the orcs off from our behind. All the while I hazarded glances down at HMR. He had noticed the enemy behind us, and had begun to try and stand, bringing his weapon up from his side. I sent a few more blows at the orcs before ducking to one side. Not wanting to be overcome with a Chanan's fire, he discharged his weapon at the bulk of the horde, sending the orcs back the way they came, rooting them before they could reach us. They ran from the flames and back down the stairs, their moral rooted, their spirit crushed. A Chanan's arm went limp as he sank back down against the wall. Anamiel I screamed, look after a Chanan, I'm going to Decius acknowledged. Anamiel nodded, go, quickly. I'll do my best to soothe him I ran from my comrades alone to where my captain had drawn the green skin. So far the mission was going well. We had snuck past enemy lines. We had supported the guardsmen below. And we had even located the orc Warbus, the leader of our enemy's forces. Once we cut off the head of the snake, the body would wither. Our combat here was joined, and we had nearly brought in low. The moment I had reached the height of the stairs was the moment my life changed for the worst. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedgear.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smut models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Chapter 2 Theodos As I got to the precipice of the stairs, a grisly image played in my mind. The visage of the orc Warbus I had briefly seen and heard flashed before me, its claw bloody in Captain Decius's entrails. I saw the image of the man who had torn my life away beaten low and to the brink of death by the enemy. It was a worthy death, one filled with valor. He deserved such a demise. One that would send him away in the surety that he passed in service to the Emperor. It was better than the death he had constructed for me. These thoughts were more heresy. I could not allow my mind to be so clouded whilst on the field of battle. I shook my head, raised my shield on high, and charged into the room. Unlike the martyr my mind had pictured, the scene before me was one where my captain was winning. He had the warbus on the defensive using his skill with a power sword to keep the massive creature at bay. Its claw, while powerful, was poor at deflecting the many blows Captain Decius was delivering. If I joined the fight, the contest would be over before it truly began. It was that fact that made me stop. Images kept playing in my head, over and over, beating me like a sledgehammer. While I knew it was my duty to obey my superior, my emotions held other ideas. Darker thoughts brewed in my head. Scenes like the one I had first imagined, all in gruesome detail, came upon me, each one more harrowing than the last. I didn't want to admit it, but the more repugnant the death, the more joy I felt. Why should this man hold the chisel of my supposed tombstone, and not the other way around the question boggled my mind for too long. While I stood paralyzed deliberating, Captain Decius landed the final blow. The massive orc tripped under its own bulk 
allowing my captain to plunge his blade into the creature's neck. It made an unholy sound as gobbits of its flesh and life's blood spattered in random directions. It sputtered, jutting a few times before it finally lay still, unable to speak as its mouth filled with liquid. Decius twisted his blade to ensure the kill was sound, and then removed the blade. He stepped away from the corpse, and looked at me, staring coldly as commanded. We are victorious this day. Bring Burns into this room if he is still able to move. The Xenos is not truly dead until it is purged in the holy fire of the Emperor. I stood motionless for perhaps a moment too long. If my captain knew of the treacherous thoughts held within my mind, he did not show it. I nodded and returned to the hallway where Anahil stood tending to HMR. When I came upon their presence, Anahil turned to me with a grim expression. For a moment I feared the worst. But H. Chenon quickly dashed away those fears, sputtering garbled noises as his still body stirred. I knelt down beside the pair, inspecting H. Chenon's injuries more thoroughly. I do not know what the salamanders do to have such a resistance to flame, but H. Chenon is relatively unscathed. His burns, once properly treated, should be no threat to his life, Anamiel explained. The worst of it is that he is still conscious. Though perhaps he views that as some sort of blessing. He is our brother. I am glad he lives. I exclaimed, truthful in that statement. While I held skepticism over H. Anand's patron space marine chapter, we had fought beside each other as equals today. Anamiel paused for a moment before asking. Just as our captain is my head veered towards Anamiel's shot played on my face under the mask of my helmet. Anamiel's hooded visage was stoic and masked. But I could tell he held a pained expression as he continued. I can read your mind, brother. We will speak of it later. How fares the captain we are victorious? I breathed, allowing the subject of my mental treachery to rest. The alien lies dead. Soon his army shall rout. If all goes well, we should be back the watchtower in a week's time. There will be no siege, Emperor be praised. Our work here is nearly done. Anamiel raised his head. A wide and weary smile spread across his face. It was contagious, for I found myself mirroring the expression. Captain Decius wants to burn the carcass. You know the larger green skins are. He could be playing dead. I continued, remembering my purpose here. H. Ammon is in no condition to move without a gurney. Take his weapon. I will stand here and keep watch over him. Animal offered. Standing from his position, I took up a chairman's weapon and stood as well. I nodded to Anahil and moved back up the stairs to where Captain Decius stood. He was examining the room at large, one which the orcs had turned from perhaps a lobby to a munition storage. One of the turrets that had harried us earlier stood jutting from a window, and sitting at its aiming receptacle was the body of an orc, his hair charred and glowing blue from Anahil's flame. Along all of the walls were crates filled with what I could only guess were spare guns and knives for the orc chaff that had snuck around us from below. Does H. Aman fare well? Captain Decius broke the silence. Yes, you used his real name I pointed out, a bit taken aback. Captain Decius had pinned the names Burns, Witch, and Shield on H. Aman, Anamiel and myself since we were initiated into the Death Watch. The mission is over. You have passed your test. You are soldiers of the Death Watch now, Captain Decius explained. I just received word that the Orcs are retreating into the mountains. This planet's guardsman can handle whatever is left of the threat. Our work is done here. Shuttles will take us back to our ship before the sun sets on this place. Emperor be praised, Emperor be praised, I echoed. I have a Chaman's gun. He is unwell and cannot move without medical attention. But Alahil says he will pull through in the end. Burn the corpse. I shall call for an apothecary before Decius could finish. A shadow filled the room. Darkness enveloped my vision. And at first I thought it was a malfunction in my helmet's tracking systems. Then, I heard my captain begin to scream in utter fury, rage, and pain. I brought a Chaman's gun high and began to discharge it at the ceiling, hoping the fire would illuminate the room around me. It was as if the darkness itself snuffed the flames, for no light emanated from the weapon. My captain still cried, and I heard the clang of metal against metal, the sounds of combat. We were being ambushed, 
But this darkness was nothing I had seen the orcs do before. I heard footsteps behind me. I spun around and hefted the shield I still carried high, going low to the ground as to avoid any fire this new combatant might unleash. I needn't have bothered, as our eel's voice sprang high, exclaiming in the words of High Gothic, let there be light the entire room was illuminated anew in blue radiance. I raised my head above my shield, and looked into the face of Anaril under his heavy hood, his eyes red in pigment and fury but spotted into something like horror. I turned around again to see my captain in pieces. His arm had been severed from his body, and lay flat against the ground ten feet away from the rest of him, leaving a scarlet trail in its wake. Decius himself was bloody as well, for gashes and cuts lined across his armored frame, making him look more like jigsaw pieces forced together against their design than a man. His helmet was carved open, and his face, glazed with the macabre signs of death, lay in an eternal scream of anger and pain. My heretical fantasies had been realized. Captain Decius, my murderer, my teacher, and my captain lay dead on the cold stone before me. His killer was not the green skin threat we were planning to face. It was unlike anything I had ever seen. Clearly not human but something disgustingly alien. Half of its body was covered, or maybe composed of, Null tree roots that purest did with veins and capillaries. The rest of its body was a twisted mass of silver, chrome, and crimson, the latter of which was most clearly the blood of Captain Decius. It had three arms and no legs, but was held aloft by some skittering creature. It was kneeling, if such an action could be conferred to this monster, next to the corpse its hand searching along his various belt pouches and compartments. I did not waste time with the aberration. I rose a chanance flame high, pointing its deadly nozzle towards the repulsive violation of life that had taken my captain, and unleashed holy fire upon it. The creature looked up at me with a single green eye, and snarled at me. The fire washed over it, but also seemed to pass through its carapace as if it was not truly there. It retrieved the strange staff, not too unlike our heels, and thrust it towards me. Light as green as its eye shot towards me at the pace of a bullet, and I rose my shield to hopefully deflect whatever the level of energy it cast upon me. By the time I lowered my aegis, the creature was scuttling out of the window where it had presumably come in from. The danger averted, I dropped a Chanan's gun, and ran towards the body of Decius. I scanned him for any faint signs of life, but he was already gone. There was nothing I could do for him now. I looked up to see Anna heel beside me, his red eyes grim as he looked about the captain's corpse. In the event where Captain Decius would fall in battle, I was to take command of our kill team, and it was clear with a Channon barely conscious and Decius dead, Anna heel would look to me to find out what we should do next. Return to a Channon. I do not want him unguarded in his current state. I shall. I shall make contact with the nearest Death Watch superior and inform him of the situation. We shall fortify this position should the creature return. I tried to sound stern, but I was still caught with disbelief of the situation. Theodos do as I command. There was one of those things. There may be more. Yes sir. Anamiel nodded his head, and walked back to HMN without another word. I was good on my word, and within a minute I had another kill team acknowledge me, and promise to be at my location within the hour. After I had made contact, I looked back at Decius, Captain no longer. His eyes were still alight with fury. He never stopped fighting that creature. The alien was searching him for something. His pockets still lie open and mostly empty. Spare magazines for his pistol and grenades lay strewn haphazardly on the floor. I knelt down by him again, and began to search him myself. He had a copy of the Codex Astartes pinned to the back of his belt a manuscript of war written by one of the sons of the Emperor, and a primarch for my previous chapter of Space Marines. It was lined in gold, and held a series of purity seals signifying it's holy imperative to drive back the forces of chaos and the heretic. His power sword was a relic he had kept from his home chapter of the Black Templars, Space Marine zealots who fought with the fury of the Emperor himself. It was engraved with a black cross, the insignia of that chapter. On the surface, there was nothing the alien could have made use of. The other kill team arrived at our position whilst I was still looking through Decius's thing. 
things. What happened next was a wash in my mind. An apothecary carried away a chairman with an eel in tow. And I remained in the room where the murder took place. The scent of death, both from Decius and the Orc Warbus, was beginning to fill the room. The captain of the other kill team questioned me about the mission, how it progressed, and how it culminated into this. I answered truthfully, withholding no detail. He repeated his line of questioning perhaps 15 times before relenting. We were all tired. We left the manufacturer and went to the guardsman's barracks. The citizenry and workers were being escorted back to their positions. The monotony of their tasks beginning to take hold again. I immediately went to the infirmary where hundreds of guardsmen were stationed as patients. Servitors and medics ran through halls while screaming and pain seeped into the minds of all present. The casualties of war were always numerous. I decided to agree with my captain posthumously. We should have come sooner. I found my battle brothers sequestered away from the bulk of the suffering masses. A chairman had been stripped of his power armor for he lay naked on the white bed sheets. His burns were being attended to with sacred unguents and soothing balm. HMR was sleeping, at peace. I craved his rest, and knew that I would be getting some soon enough. We are wickedly fortunate. Anamiel broke the silence. Due to HMR's injuries, we'll be some of the first to return to the ship. You find fortune in this. Anamiel I questioned, cold in my voice. I find fortune in all things. The Emperor's blessings can come in small, hidden places as well as shining. Golden ones, Anamiel smiled. It was a weary expression, one that begged me not to test his faith. I relented. Earlier you told me we would speak of the captain. I remembered. Brother, please, wait until we return to the ship. We need rest more than arguments. Anamiel seethed. I agreed with him in silence. I walked over to the wall and tried to think of quiet things. My mind had been tumultuous throughout the entire mission, filled with heretical doubt and treason. My worst, and yet best wishes had been fulfilled with my captain's death, and I knew not how to think on it. I breathed deeply, and began to think about other things, simpler things. At one point, I opened my own copy of the Codex as starts, and instinctually read a passage. The warrior who acts out of honor cannot fail. His duty is honor itself. Even his death, if it is honorable, is a reward and can be no failure for it has come through duty. Seek honor as you act, therefore, and you shall know no fear. Decius died with honor, was all Anil responded. Yes, he did. I closed the codex as starts, and tasted salt on my lips.